I had been a baton twirler since I was four years old. And it was kind of the, the pinnacle dream for me to twirl for a big university. I was really competitive growing up and I wanted to showcase my talent in a performance element. So I was throughout my high school trying to figure out where I'd be landing for, uh, for my twirling career in, in college. And I read about the marching band uh, being formed at the Richmond Times Dispatch in, in Richmond. And I, on a whim, created a video and sent it in. And I still remember to this day sending it in and getting emails back from David Knight and thinking, I don't know who this guy is, but I want to talk to him and I want to meet him. And, and ultimately, he said, send in a video. And that's when Dr. P saw it. And he, I think within a couple of days, he gave me a call and said, I don't really know who you are, and I know you're a junior in high school, but I need you to come meet with me. And I think my parents and I came a couple days later, and he said, as long as you don't have a band that you're twirling for in high school, you're going to twirl for my band in your senior year of high school. So it was truly a crazy, beyond my wildest dreams experience being able to twirl for a big university while I was still in high school. It's interesting because, like I said, with, with twirling, I knew I wanted to perform in college. And I had been looking at a, a ton of other schools in, in throughout my high school uh, years, and, and University of Georgia was kind of the top runner. And I was kind of dead set on going there. My sophomore year of high school, met with the band director there, and I knew the twirling coach really well, and, and I kind of thought that's where I was going to go. And then when UVA twirling it for my senior year, after the very first game, September 11, 2004, I was like, this is this is where I'm going, this is what I have to do. So I applied early decision, and it was before the Virginia Tech football game that we found out that I got in, and of course I remember coming here to Charlottesville and getting on the buses and everyone getting so excited that I, I, I was accepted and, and that was it. I, I was kind of ready to go from there. I went to an all-girl private school in Richmond, so I had never been a part of a band. So I would perform for football games, but it was truly just me on the football field uh, for the all-guy military school. So band was something brand new for me. And I remember band camp and practicing at the park. And I remember sitting down with Dr. Peace and he showed me drill. And truly that was a foreign language, looking at drill and, and marching and where we were doing and on all the pages. And I remember looking at the pages of pregame, we were practicing on, on spelling everything out and what we were going to do and he said all right so when you start we're going to announce you in the drum majors and you're going to run out from the middle of the band and lead the band down while they're about to spell wahoos and when they're spelling wahoos i need you to run across the opposite side of the field and go when they're spelling out you know the w the a h o o s and that was probably my first memory of looking at it and saying Oh my gosh, what in the world did I do? Uh, but I, 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 that was kind of my first memory was being there at band camp back in uh, the English Inn. For me, as I did twirl my senior year in high school, I was coming up to Charlottesville two to three times a week and maintaining my, my grades and, and all my other commitments. And, and it was a commitment to my family as well, for my, for my family bringing me here. Uh, but it was something that they were so proud and, and put a lot into it, as, as well as my, my high school. I had so much support from teachers being there. Um, but, you know, it was, it did take a, a lot of dedication. Um, but I, I knew that, you know, with hard work, you know, dreams come to fruition. And that's what I really got to see. But, yeah, that, those, those, the, first, the first year was, was really tough and, and not knowing what it is and, and everything kind of being so foreign. I was not used to performing in front of that many people and I wasn't used to drill or being a part of a band and you know I think for all of us you know as a soloist I was lucky because I didn't necessarily rely on anyone else to do my thing. You know I, I could just kind of twirl on my own side but seeing everyone pull things together, show after show, and get such a great reaction from the crowd was, was truly breathtaking. Being a part of the Cowboy Marching Band was um, a huge part of my life in college, and it was something that I was so immensely proud to be a part of. And, you know, I, I kind of think about it, and, and you, you think about, sure, I was the future twirler there, and, and for me, I was doing what I 
what I love to do. But it's really humbling to be a part of a program where I was among the founding members that build the foundation of really what this organization has, has become and you see how successful it is today. Um, so my college experience was largely built around my twirling and being a part of this band and, and, and like you said I was involved in the band in the football season. That's kind of where my you know focus was with my twirling. But then we got into spring semester and I started um, on the competition element of my twirling and it, it really kind of changed even my twirling career because for me it wasn't okay, that's Erica Seredney, twirler from Richmond. It was, I represent the University of Virginia. Um, but being a part of this band really uh, molded a lot of my college memories. I always tried to integrate different beats of the music into my performance. When there was like a, a, a big beat in, in, in the song, I would try and do a big toss. Um, but, you know, given that, I, and I don't know how band members did it, that there'd be six or seven different shows a year, learning drill and the music, it was really tough. So what I had is I had some good sections. So I had my one baton section, I had two baton, I had three baton, and I had my four baton tricks that I was going to do. So I had everything kind of set up, and what I like to do is I wanted to show to every part of the stadium. So I would try and do different stuff for different areas, and you know, I'd repeat some of the sections, but I got really comfortable with um, several tricks and, and several different sections and would just kind of put it together with the music that we, we played for that upcoming week. I became really good friends with the, uh, the custodial staff at the cage. I truly did. I, I actually would make them cookies and brownies because I would always go in there and they would turn on lights for me. I would sometimes be able to get into U-Haul. I became um, kind of the, the person that everyone saw practicing whenever I could. Um, I, I would sometimes wake up early in the morning and have early practices at the AFC since it wasn't as busy. So on a, on a weekly basis, outside of band practice, I would probably have about five to eight hours a week. And then when competition season hit, I would be practicing at least two to three hours a day. Plus going to Richmond and being a part of teams and having, you know, spot lessons. But, you know, it was something for me that I really loved and it was something that I was passionate about. So when you, when you really give your heart and soul into anything, it, it, you make things work. I had the distinct honor of being able to represent the university at numerous twirling competitions throughout my four or five years at twirling for the university and, and one of the biggest honors was competing for the college Miss Majorette title in which I was able to really go and represent and win titles for the university. And I, I went to a collegiate competition and actually helped um, as it started um, kind of bring some excitement around to college twirling and being able to win titles not as Erica Sredney, but winning titles for the university was kind of a, a really the ultimate success for my twirling uh, competition career. I was competitive uh, baton twirling um, while in school up to my third year, my fourth year. I decided I was kind of I was kind of done. I wanted to finish out uh, the fall of my fourth year, but really try some something different and kind of focus on opening a new chapter of my life because twirling had been so important. And um, I finished football season and was trying to figure out what's next. And I had been really uh, convinced to do um, a, a local pageant to compete for Miss Virginia. And I thought, why not? I, I have the twirling. And for me, it was just a, another avenue for me to do what I love to do and to perform. So I, I was really honored to, to go to Miss Virginia, make it in the top five, and, and really um, hone in on some of my skills and, and performing. And, and, I, and I enjoyed um, the, the pageant side of things. I learned a lot from it. Um, and, and it was just another, it was another time for me to twirl, which is what I really enjoyed. I twirled for UVA for four years by myself, and it was just me. And, and I was so passionate about this program and, and what I had done and, and you know, people had a good understanding of Baton Girl and, and they knew that Baton Girl was a part of the band. And I was really, really proud of that. So it was awesome to bring Audrey in and I knew her and, and grew up twirling with her in teams in Richmond. So having her come and perform with me my last year and kind of prep her to take over that spot was really, really exciting. And, and to see the program, it's, it's interesting, it's grown in every section. But now, you know, it started with me as a future twirler, and now it's kind of grown into like a majorette line, having multiple twirlers out there. 
So it's pretty exciting and, and we as baton twirlers are extremely lucky to have a band director like Dr. Feast that is fully in support of having twirlers be the visual element of the band. I think it was my second year at UVA. It was beginning of the fall football season. It was after the Pittsburgh game that we drove to and, and I traveled to that game. I had the craziest thing happen. My ankle was swollen. It didn't hurt, I, I, it didn't bother me, but it was, it was very, very thick. It, I had a cankle, to be honest. And I remember going to Dr. Feast and saying, I don't know what's wrong with me, but my ankle is swollen, and then it went to my other ankle. And we had to figure out what was wrong, so he, he kind of made, made it a priority to figure out what is wrong with Erica and making sure we, we get that fixed. So that was kind of one of the weird moments, and, and my dad still to this day says, I remember you leaping in the field, and you could just see you have a really fat ankle. Like it wasn't very cute, but I mean, you know, throughout my twirling career, I definitely dealt with with injuries. But any athlete does that, and you kind of have to fight the uh, fight past the pain and and use the adrenaline to keep you going. And for me, performing was such a rush that it didn't matter if uh, my ankle was twisted or my leg was pulled or a muscle was hurting, because because I was there to do the job to perform for halftime. I get in front of 60-some thousand fans, you know, you're tossing a baton up and everyone knows when you mess up, you drop. So it's not like I can easily hide it. Um, but for me, that was my comfort zone. And that seems kind of odd to say um, because it is weird being in front of so many people and, and, you know, doing your kind of crazy tricks. But it, is, it was what I worked myself up to be and that's what I wanted to do. So it didn't matter where I was performing and I kind of looked at, I always try to run across the field and perform for a certain area and I kind of made it kind of an intimate experience in that I was performing for just that subset of people in, in the stadium and it was very much so my comfort zone. Now granted I would get some anxiety and nerves beforehand but when I was out there I knew that's what I was supposed to be doing. I really just ultimately have really positive experiences. I think you know, being able to keep up with the workload at the university and the, the expectations that we had to be there and to be a committed member, it was, it was challenging. Um, but, you know, through, through all of that, I, I looked around and I drew inspiration from the members of the band. I think when you're around people that are so exceptionally um, amazing people, I mean, and truly inspiring. You know, it doesn't, it didn't matter if I had a test or I had other stuff going on. I looked at the people around me and kind of drew that same inspiration and, and excitement about, you know, what we were doing and what we were building here at the university. Dr. Peace kind of started, and, and he is, was very much so while I was here, like a father figure to me. And he was really big on making sure everything in my life was set. So, how was I doing in class? How was I doing, you know, being in Charlottesville? So I got really close with him and, and blessed to have him a part of my life throughout my college career. And, and I also got close with the whole family. The, the Peace family is just an amazing uh, family unit that we are all lucky that we became a part of their family throughout our years of college. But I was able to start a twirling program here in Charlottesville. I started the Junior Wahoo Majorettes, and we would practice out in the subdivision where the pieces lived. And um, I got to teach uh, Madison how to start twirling. And I know she still keeps it up, so that's kind of cool. But I had a really close relationship with Dr. Peace and, and really looked at him like a father figure for me. And Mr. Cook is, um, I, I have some, some wild memories of him at band camp. I think we will try, or still trying to erase memories of how crazy he was during uh, band camp. But you know, Mr. Cook is a truly wonderful man and really skilled at what he does. And, and you can see at every practice, rehearsal, game day that he puts his heart and soul into what he, he does for the band. And to see that commitment um, on all levels is, is really a wonderful thing. And it makes you realize that it takes the whole army to make this band successful. But the people at the top really put so much work into it. And for that, we are all so grateful that we had their commitment. And Idzuar was so much fun. I, I call him Idz Man. 
So I obviously really um, just loved him and, and truly a, a wonderful instrumentalist and, and really talented himself. And, you know, it was great. I, I got to work with them and, and to, uh, to be kind of my, my own thing on the side, but having them um, be the leaders of our band, um, they truly were, you know, great um, coaches and leaders for us.